What do you get when you take a permaculture design course? Like, you know, especially with Midwest permaculture. Yeah. Yeah, what's the point? Why do it? Right? Is, or is anything emerging from that? Mm-hmm. You have an emergence definition? Yeah. Innovation, informed creativity. Mm. So it's, I, yeah, I like that. That's one of the words that people question a lot when I, when they see it on the poster mm-hmm. is this idea of like, what is emergence? I'm like, oh, something is going to emerge from this transition, this time of, you know, sometimes it's crisis that gets you there. Usually it's just your awareness is, is raised in some way. And then you get to a transition point and you emerge into action and moving forward. So I think part of the permaculture design course is kind of you've come to this awareness. You're like, oh man, something's got to give or I know there's a better solution or I'm curious to see what else is out there. I've been thinking about this. I want to know more about these aspects of land care or how we care for our communities and things like that. So your awareness starts getting raised and then you figure out what to do next and sometimes it leads you to a permaculture design course sometimes it leads you to an internship on a farm sometimes it leads you to just networking and talking to people around you sometimes it gets you into reading a lot of books but you go through a transition at some point with permaculture and immersing yourself into the study of it in the fashion that it's presented now right yeah you go through everyone goes through that in some way shape or form and then you emerge into the world that we live in now the jobs that we have now, the way that we are as characters <laughs> in this big game of life, right? <laughs> so it has to express itself differently in each of us. But, I mean, I see emergence as like something new. Innovative. Innovative, mm-hmm. something that wasn't there before and it's bigger than the sum of its parts. Which I think there's another definition that's... Yeah, bigger than the sum of its parts. Well, I mean, anything you do in permaculture is just taking action on a portion, a part of the whole, right? So we're looking at design from instead of like, oh, we're designing these little systems and like, you know, creating this bigger system, you know, there's a bigger system. (laughs) We're taking just a facet or portion or a part of it and implementing. Yeah, we're always working within the larger context. Yeah. Transferring so, well, energy between all those different. Well, it feels it feels often like people make designs. Just I, I don't know. I just have this this like view of what a design, almost like a stereotypical character caricature caricature design? of what the permaculture designer does, and and it's. <laughs> You, you know, of like course. everyone has a stereotype of everyone else. <laughs> Even well, if we try not to judge or to create stereotypes, they're they're provided to us in our society. So we have to filter those, right? Where are you going with that? I agree. There's a stereotypical permaculture designer for sure. Yeah, and I think a lot of even. Even the talk about taking a permaculture design course or talk about even furthering your education, becoming more knowledgeable, building your awareness about permaculture, it, it still fits into that, that, I mean, at it, its very worst, it's, you know, this fancy gardening, right? But, and, but. And, and or or really really messy gardening. Messy gardening, <laughs> or or even the master design idea, like that's it. But that's not. I don't know. I'd like that to clear that from the permaculture field language text. Master plan. Like, master plan. So many things wrong with that phrase. Well, but I hear you. The big uh, picture. Uh, <laughs> That's, that's a that's a whole podcast in itself, right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a thirty second blip. But no, but I think we definitely realize that permaculture is more than that, mm-hmm. right? And we, um, you, you know, I, I, I mean, my, I think my kind of current thinking is like, well, how do you, how do you get that down to its smallest, smallest form? 
right? Like, so, so because I'm doing this advanced permaculture design course, yeah. right? Like for designers, right? And, and I'm, um, fortunate that we have, I can, I can think about this and, and like update my thinking even more because we have two more days left of class. Um, but, uh, I just, I just think it's the wrong way to be thinking about it, to think like you're going to be the professional designer. You're going to oh. go out and get the clients and, and here's how you... Yeah, but it's, it's what kind of permaculture designer do you want to be? It's not, you're now a permaculture designer. There's, it's like, there needs to be more definition than that. No, like well, we're all individuals and we have our specialties and our skills. And I think that if people could come with an open mind and embracing the skills that they have and the experience they have and bring that to the table when they take a design course and then they influenced it with this design process, this ethical, you know, foundation, uh, maybe philosophy and way of being in the world <laughs> and you take that and you infuse your skill set with it and you see what comes of it. Because it's going to take you different places. So what I design might be very different from what you design, or from what you know one of our friends designs, or our teachers, or something. So we're not all land use designers. Some of us can take our permaculture design thinking, or goggles, as some people would say, and kind of filter that through our skill set and our perspective and the the world that which we live in. Because after everyone leaves that course, an intensive course like that, your way of thinking has changed. And that's very intentional. But you have to then go home and figure out how to, without a support system often, because you're leaving your community to go to these courses and then you're returning home. And even within your family unit, you are kind of an, almost an outsider because you now think differently. You still love your partner. You still love your kids. That's never going to change, but you're thinking radically differently and you have to figure out how to infuse what you've just learned and what you're trying to like embrace and embody into the reality that you left <laughs> nine or 14 or however many days ago. And that's always been something to me that I feel like isn't well supported in permaculture conversations. And I think is an integral part on how we really start moving forward in permaculture is, you know, there's only so much money out there quote unquote, for the quote unquote permaculture designer, you know, in the land use spectrum or in the spectrum, the teacher spectrum, like there's just, there's a certain pool and hopefully that's growing and building, but like, <laughs> the last time I did that, it was, oh, your wife's been in a car accident. Oh no! She got she was on her bike and she got hit. Oh no! Yeah. And you knew she was on her bike. And did you know she was on her bike when you got? Oh my god! Because I had the car. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Usually that's the case. That's that was my point. Yeah. Oh and no! They're taking her to the hospital. Oh my gosh! Do you want to check it? <laughs> you can. Yeah, it'll it'll do its thing in a minute. Okay, I'm trying to find this quote. It's all good. I'm really you are. We're really done, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> you've already done it. No, I mean, yeah. You, okay, you, said the good, you said the juice. I said the juice. Okay. Uh, so this is the quote that I I would love for everyone to think about when teaching permaculture or stepping into learning more about permaculture. Uh, okay. So. Uh, Dan writes here, I recommend moving gently in permaculture directions, being gentle with one's newfound enthusiasm on family and friends, and asking not so much how am I going to fit my life into permaculture, but how is permaculture going to fit into my life? Oop. Yeah, we have to go back and plug it back in, and we have to create a support, yeah, well, support system support. for each other. I think is what is lacking in these courses. Like, I honestly would want to like charge more and have follow up consultation sessions with people. Like, that's part of the reason I think that like a longer course mm -hmm. where you can embody and integrate is great. I think from Bill and Becky's though, the deep submersion was important to kind of shake and rattle me yeah, out I of think, like I a stagnancy. <laughs> like, 
That's an important aspect yeah. of it. Here, let's see, here's a, here's a message. Matt Lawson. Sunday's food for the bring the organic white potatoes, organic sweet potatoes. There it goes. Bring some venison sausage from I think coming back and okay, great. I'll talk to him in a minute. Future of food. Cool, that's so exciting. I'm yeah. super excited about the future of food for you. Yeah. And all of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love food. <laughs> well, it's a really good point. Um these are pumpkin seeds if you want. Yeah. I, I eat pumpkin seeds. Okay. Um, the emergence, mm -hmm. right, of, of once we bring permaculture into our lives and how that affects our lives, uh, our lives and, and what new thing emerges from that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think part of the, th the thing about emergence is that you don't know. Sometimes you know, mm -hmm. but not always. Like you can't plan it out the way that you can plan out a uh, a curriculum, and, you know. Mm -hmm. you can, well, even that you can't really plan out. No, <laughs> like, it's no. still an emergent design. Every time you get to the morning, it's always, and I mean, you have a good idea. What were we thinking not, about? Yeah, what wait, what did we? No, huh. and, but it's an emergent design as it pro, as it happens because you're cultivating an experience for people, and yeah. once, as you're cultivating that experience, you have to read them and feel into the situation. This whole reason I did my yoga course so that I can help like move and adjust and balance out energies as needed. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and that's emerging. I would have, I wanted to do a yoga teacher training a long time ago, mm -hmm. but then it kind of like never really fit in my life with a small child. And then I did my, and I feel like I've gone through that permaculture thing and I was like slowly still being infused with yoga and then getting them to both kind of merge together. And mm -hmm. that was really super powerful and cool. Looking forward to exploring that with yeah. a whole collective of people. Minds that do these things. Yep. When did you take your course? I want to say it was in Winter. January or February of 2012. I think it was January mm -hmm. 2012. Okay. I think it's, yeah, it's definitely made me <laughs> think different, differently from day one, but then fig trying to figure out how to infuse that thinking into day Wasn't to day. it in 2013? Maybe. Because... Yeah, because maybe, yeah. Because Oscar Oh yeah. was there. Okay. And he wasn't there. In 2012? No. Nope. Okay, cool. So it's... He was born it was, into the, in so August. So it was like January then. It was, what? yeah. Okay, so that's why I'm thinking it was Yeah, you're kind of attaching it to like, the last year. Yeah, because yeah, it was part of that, that, <laughs> that life cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that growth and death cycle right there, right? Yeah. And, uh, yes. Yeah, so 2013. Yeah, so what's, what sort of things are you, are you working on these days? <laughs> Uh, my main focus is definitely the design game and toolkit, which is ADAPT. And I just handed you a tester's copy of, so it's like a really momentous occasion. Uh, I've built like 20, I'm going to build 25 of these over the next three days. So. Okay. And, and I'm, I leave on Monday to start delivering them to people right. by hand. I'm going to, to, I'm going to India. the UK and then India. Okay. So. Well, first the UK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of meetings lined up there, so. That's great. Yeah, so it feels really good to have this progressing and reach this point and be able to take it to a larger international audience of people and perspectives before it can be published. So I think going through collaborative design process mm. is definitely one thing that I got from all of my permaculture trainings is really sinking into the unknown, like kind of standing on that edge and having better judgment and decision-making mm -hmm. skills mm -hmm. <laughs> to know whether to leap or not. <laughs> right. You know, sometimes you really do need to leap off that cliff, that cliff, you know, and other times you need to not. 
and I think permaculture has, I know permaculture has given me better decision making tools. And so I think that's what I was really trying to do with creating this game, is I was trying to figure out how to apply permaculture. And so I think the game is really always building on, on that. I'm um, doing some landscape design and teaching some classes and workshops, doing a fair amount of like gardening and things, a little bit around my house and a lot more for others, <laughs> but that's good because I'm spreading, you know, food and medicine. I am raising a little boy, so that has its own permaculture practice the principles <laughs> infused into its process. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm trying to live in this chaotic world that we all exist in, and I think if I didn't have the resiliency skills and the hope, and I won't even say hope, I'm trying to get that word out of my vocabulary, I would say the faith in systems and in people, in natural systems especially, that I've been given from permaculture that def definitely ha helps me live in this chaotic world. Hmm. Faith and complexity. Yeah, faith and complexity. And I think there's a little bit of, once you start to learn how nature systems work, you have some faith in the system. So you see this chaos going on and you know that it might not be pretty or <laughs> it might be kind of painful. There's a fair amount of suffering in this realm that we, physical realm that we live in. And you just know that, you know, you're going to contribute the best that you can and do the best that you can and, and work within it. And you know, nature systems always balance themselves out. So having faith in that, the complexity of nature systems. Yeah, it works out in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty amazing how much we've abused the world around us. Mm -hmm, the people and the land. The, the, all of it. And all, of it. And all, all the people. Yeah. The human people and the non human people. All the beings. All, yeah. All the beings. The tree well, beings, the animal beings. They've all suffered. They're people. They're all people. Yeah. Tree people, animal people. <laughs> all the beings. They've all suffered from a lot of disrespect. I think yeah. it comes from a lack of understanding, you know, a lack of listening, a lack of understanding, lack of having faith in nature systems and processes. I think there's connection too. Mm -hmm. That lack of connection once mm -hmm. once you become disconnected, Oof. then <laughs> then then it's really easy to just start to abuse. Yeah. Right. Mm. You know, and that's quotable for like on so many levels and so yeah. many realms. Please write that one down. <laughs> I made a couple memes. Did you? Yeah. Cool. Um, that's some of the outtakes from just well, your own just, stuff. Just my, just I uh, like, yeah, like you know, permaculture is only like it's it only happens like where we are. And only with what we built with our two hands. And there's nobody's gonna hand it to you. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's gonna um you know, unless you have a nice mom that's that's building a nice permanent <laughs> paradise for you. But even then it's it's pretty you know, it's not a given. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not a given and this is the other thing that I've been thinking about too as I created this this game and this toolkit that I, I'm excited to share. I'm realizing more and more, and even that nine, ten year old boy that I'm talking about right now, he sees permaculture as a toolkit. And that was kind of Dan's reference point after that quote that I said earlier. He, uh, this guy named Terry White said, Permaculture is one of the tools I use in my life. And I like to think of it that way. Like, I like to qu quote. William Faith on the whole permaculture is not something I do, it is something I use to yeah. do things, you know, I utilize, reuse. So, it's, it's a toolkit. It's not the whole thing. It's like, and we have to keep collecting pieces and parts of that toolkit and all these different personalities and skill sets bring those to the table. So that's why I don't think any permaculture design can be done alone. 
Yeah. I don't think it's truly possible because one mind can't think of all the different parts of the whole. Even two minds can't. Three minds, we're just struggling and fumbling along. It takes many minds and many experiences and many new fresh perspectives to bring permaculture to life. And to create the change we want to see in the world. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. How do we be that collectively? Well, that's, that's what we need. So, so um, going back to the, the support structures for permaculturists. Support structures? For, for, for post-PDC. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about that. Let's have a global conversation about that, please. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I mean, we can start today, and I'll just keep asking that question for the next month, and I'll report back on how people, yeah. know, what's the, what's people's support methods for permaculture well, folks after they take a PDC I mean, no, or once you read, one. read the manual. Yeah, once well, you read the manual. <laughs> you need a support well, group. Once you're it. twitching on the floor. Like, oh. Dude, the diagrams are all swirling around in okay. your brain. The um, but it seems it seems that it could be related to the course that you take, but also could be independent. Yeah. Mhm. Definitely. And and to, to yeah to see the way that people integrate permaculture into their lives. Yeah, I think that's the next big step. That's the next key with all of this. It's like one thing to talk about it, and it's one thing to be able to like teach a 72-hour course on like how to apply this to land, but there's so much more, and I think it takes way more. Than, I know that goes beyond land use. It does, but it's super focused was, on it. So it's to me, there like, there's a, so much more that needs to be... Some Somebody, I can't... Uh, spiral seed? Spiral seed. Mm -hmm. Somebody. Mm -hmm. Spiral seed permaculture. I'll look it up. Yeah, it's they, they they had a, a thing about like permaculturists have mistaken the map of permaculture as the territory of permaculture. Map first territory. Mm -hmm. Right, and so they learn about permaculture mm -hmm. and the map. His swales and trees and guilds and yeah. you know all this stuff, but the, but they they like that's all they they get stuck on that. Mm -hmm. and it's like it's almost like that's a metaphor for permaculture in every other system, system in all the systems of our, our life. It's just like spiritual bypassing. It's permaculture bypassing. You get stuck on the swales and yeah. you forget how to integrate it into your skill set. Because yeah. maybe you're not you're not going to go out and dig swales. That's okay. How how do you apply this? Like this is how I, I've met so many people that have been at like little work days or something, or they take a little bit of a permaculture course and they're just like, I don't. I don't want to garden. Like, I don't want to be a farmer. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, you guys have given me all this information, but I don't want to plant things. And I was like, okay, well, what do you love to do? I'm a musician. Okay, well, how can you think about spreading what you love in a caring way that supports maybe the people that do want to be farmers the, and supports the whole system. The permaculture flower is a good yeah. tool for that. How can you take action in your life? Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and in these different aspects of... Yeah, the domains. The domains. These yeah. The, the, I mean, on, on one hand, it's a way to categorize different things, right? Like the domains of permaculture. Mm -hmm. But I think if you flip it over, then I think it becomes much more useful. Because you can say, well, look, there's a gutter. What are the domains of that gutter? Mm -hmm. You know, how does, how does it exist in terms of, you know, land use and stewardship? Mm -hmm. You know, how does it exist in terms of culture? Yeah. You know, and education and, education and spirituality. Yeah. How does that, how, mm -hmm. how does that, does that gutter affect our spirituality? <laughs> yeah because it does it does it's subtle yeah you know but it 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 changes the way that we interact with the world and that changes the way that we view the world and it's ever emerging 
uh, yeah. new experiences and new ways of thinking come in and out of our yeah. perspective, perception. Yeah, that's about that. <laughs> I think there's something in there. But designing a life that really does, you know, I'm defining permaculture right now in this draft of the booklet as a toolkit or a tool for designing caring, life sustaining systems. Mm -hmm. So, systems that sustain life so that like, life's thriving, right? That's really important. And they're really caring because to be that, you have to be caring. And so whatever we need to put in our toolbox for that. So we need to like spend a week learning how to take care of ourselves better so that we can live in that way for ourselves and then be able to reflect that and share that with others so that we can keep doing our good works. Or if we need to like figure out how to apply that to, you know, the grocery store down the street or the city council, let's say, you know, I think those are all places in which this, these tools could be applied in, yeah. in a more advanced and deeper, more thoughtful way. And just like the when we presented at the PDC in Ann Arbor this year, when we talked, we kind of went back into design methods and design process later on in the course, and we did the Permaculture Futures Designer's Toolbox kind of presentation where we were like, hey, look, there's a whole toolbox just for design process, and like here's a bunch of different me methods we want to offer you right now that we see a lot of people using and we've utilized ourselves in productive ways. And I think that we have to take that and then just keep infusing like the core personal community and global needs into them. And then what? And then what? And then we're all gonna <laughs> ascend, the world will explode and we'll all we'll be ascend, <laughs> yes. Or we'll just North vaporize Korea. ourselves. Yeah, right. That could happen too. Or none of that could happen. Yeah, and we could all we'll end all up... all vibrate <laughs> ourselves yeah. to like... <laughs> We're all gone. Out. No, um, I don't know what could come of that. Any number of things. I, could, I don't know what the solution is. It's emergent. We're just saying, hey, here's a toolkit. Let's see what emerges, right? Yeah. That's what the permaculture design course is. It's like, here, we're going to hand you a toolkit. We'll see what emerges. I think collectively as a community we should and movement we should talk about how we care for each other and support each other outside of there and I think it's getting better and I think having these convergences and having these like local conversations and having these, you know, collective sharings are one way to do that. The future of food and sharing that mm -hmm. is another great way to do that. Yep. Yeah. Hmm.